Hello Duelist, Tom Boxing Nishi here and today we're doing one of our most requested videos, in-depth profile on Peppy. Uh, you guys, your deck's dead. What? What? What are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, emergency ban list. Oh, what oh my- Hello Duelist, Tom Boxing Nishi here from MST TV and... What are we talking about today? We are talking about the slaughter that was the adjustment to the ban list on February 3rd, 2016. Yes, that was a very painful Rest in day. peace, all Pepe players. This actually has uh, not happened for a very long time. We, we like to call this the emergency ban list, but in between the format, yeah. like the, uh, the, I guess the big guys up, up top, they just come in and cut off the deck. Right, yeah. I guess basically what happened is Konami was looking at regionals and like big events from the past couple of weekends and they said oh Pepe's far too powerful it's taking too many top spots and we're gonna kill the deck. <laughs> it's kind of strange that they didn't do this to Necroz as Necroz lived for seven months and dominated. Necroz lived for a long time. <laughs> lived for about uh, two and a half formats. Yeah that was and, weird. And uh, this Ironically, this one only lived for about two, two weeks. weeks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we'll get into the actual changes now. So uh, there were six really, really big changes, uh, kind of similar to what happened in the OCG. So we have three bands. We have Band Performage Plush Fire, uh, Performage Damage Juggler, and Teller Knight Ptolemyus. See, I didn't mind these three. I actually did not mind the ones that got banned. Sure, it's like six cards on my deck, but I was struggling to keep my deck down at 40 at the time. Uh, I would, like, Darren ran 44, and he's top, he top 8. But, I mean, if you were going to cut your deck down to 40 cards, these wouldn't be the cards that you cut. I would cut a plush fire, though. Plush fire, I would cut. Uh, not damage juggler. I don't uh, uh, okay. you know. I'd hesitate to cut the, yeah, yeah, the plush fire. Anyway, anyways, anyways, well, uh, anyway, so, uh, limits. We also have three other cards. So, Performa Pal Skullcrabat Joker. <laughs> Performa Pal Monkey Board. Yeah. And Luster Pendulum the Draco yeah. Slayer. These were... Three really, really big hits. I know he's feeling it right yeah. now. <laughs> it's That's causing painful. him physical pain. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have a heart attack soon. <laughs> yeah, they, that was were actually very, uh, like, pretty much the last straw on, of the deck. Even if you killed all the plush fires and stuff, right? Um, that's literally just mimicking OCG, and OCG is still topping with the deck. Uh, it's still going really, really strong. Of course, they have a lot of better extra deck options like Giant Hand available to everyone. Well, we're, get we're getting that. And we're getting soon, there too, and right? we're also getting Utopia. In other words, you take out the that extra deck slot, we can actually fill these cards in, mm -hmm. which wouldn't mm -hmm. mind that, which wouldn't be that bad. But what um, really mattered was losing Luster was a big hit. Monkey Board. Monkey Board just came out. Right. Monk we yeah. Yeah, it just came out. And Skullcrabat Joker. Skullcrabat was a structure deck, the one previous to yeah. this one. Yeah. But they're, hit they're hitting decks so soon, which makes me feel a little unsafe getting right. new cards, like just buying packs in general. No, it, yeah, it's kind of kind of kind of soonish. Well, we were supposed to feel a bit safer about buying packs with the new rarity adjustments, and then they go out and they say, "All right, you guys spent all your money on these packs. You now guys have <clears throat> all those." Not really. <laughs> well. So how does this affect uh, competitive play? Well, I mean, Pepe is very clearly not going to be a contender for the top deck of the format they're anymore. Def they're definitely not going to live up to its OCG. Uh, oh, absolutely not. <laughs> precedent, of course. Just because now you've lost, what, oh, how many cards? 12 cards in the main deck, and you've lost one card in your extra deck. Technically, you lost more than one card in your extra deck. You technically lost three. You lost yeah, the Cyber yeah, Dragon, yeah, yeah. all that. All right. the, all the little slap on top of each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's gone. And uh, basically, that's just saying you're no longer welcome to top. I, I kind of feel it's a little insulting to the other top tier decks. Uh, it's, it feels like it's babying them. Yeah, kind of. It's like, oh, don't worry, we got rid of the bully for you. <laughs> you guys can play in your little sandbox. If you yeah. top, you'll still get your invite. It's yeah. like, are they really working that hard for it? Not uh, as much. Yeah. And a lot of players, they're really good against countering. I mean, Seattle Regionals, the top two decks were uh, both Cosmos. Fair enough. Uh, do you think Pepe even has Tier 2 potential, though? No, I no. don't think it has any Tier 2 potential. I actually, after the, the list drop, I went on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, tried to test the, game, test the deck out by taking out all the stuff that was mentioned. Mm -hmm. And uh, of those 20 games, the hardest decks to play against uh, were mainly Cosmo. I had a very big struggle going through uh, Dark Eclipser. Not even Dark Eclipser. I had problems going through uh, 
Oh, there's an Eclipser? Yeah. Yeah, you said Eclipser. Yeah, I had problems going through all of their big ships pretty much. Um, right. Whether it be this, the Forerunner or anyone that's strong. I can't target them, right? And I have trouble getting out the Ignister, right? That's because Luster's limited, and Luster's their tuner. It's like sure, I have three Draco face off, but it doesn't. Yeah. If it's not there, it's not there, yeah. right? Yeah. Right now, it's like the options are three to three. So you have three uh, Draco face off to your three Lusters. So you have like you know of your forty cards, you have six and forty to get it. Four out of forty, two Lust or one Luster and three Draco face off. Yeah. Yeah. Just well, you just need one copy of it, really. So you have, you have your, those are your odds, and uh, well, if I can't deal with it, I can't deal with it. Second of all, it's very difficult to deal with um, even burning abyss. Yeah, I was they. I struggled against that deck. It's hard to maintain my field because uh, whatever I'm drawing, the the filler cards I had to fill for the missing slots, right. like upstarts and whatnot, they uh, don't do enough. They don't do enough anymore. Right. They're not synergizing very well. Mm -hmm. Of course, I don't open with monkey board or skull Crabat all the time now. Right. Yeah. So my I find it very difficult to hold on to my skills. Fair enough. Yeah. So that's pretty much what happened to the deck. Okay. Uh, so. Something I think that was really big that I'm kind of surprised they didn't hit, but I guess they were only touching Pepe related cards or pure like Pepe cards. Uh, Wavering Hands wasn't hit. Yeah. And obviously, before one of the like a pretty scary play in Pepe was Plush Fire plus Wavering Eyes. Yes. Because you not only got the Wavering Eyes search, but you got the Plush Fire to summon out Damage Juggler or Trick Clown. Uh, that was a very good play, but I think the play actually moved on to um, using Luster and uh, Pendulum, Sorcerer. Pendulum Sorcerer, because yeah. that was a much better play. You just put put those two on the scale, pop one, get another one, put it on scale, Pendulum Summon, pop the two scales, mm -hmm. and you're basically ready to go off because you have a normal summon, so you add the you basically add the the Joker to hand, you summon mm -hmm. the Joker, you can just go off, and then there you, you go. You have your Pot of Greed play following. <laughs> yeah, you have a Guitar pot of, Turtle. And... Everything was ready, and then you have the Luster in the extra deck too, right. so you have the kill play right then and there. Yeah, no. So I was like, okay, so that was, so that was the power play. Like, Wavering Eyes and Plush Fire, Plush Fire was kind of a given. I think many people predicted that Plush Fire and Damage Juggler were going to go just like OCG, mm -hmm. and that honestly i didn't mind plush fire leaving like leaving wavering eyes right now is absolutely irrelevant because of the other deck that also kind of uses wavering eyes would be uh magicians right magicians they took a bit of collateral damage from the a uh, little bit from little the joker bit. so now yeah. they actually lost consistency in terms of searching for the uh the magician. insight magician right. or the, the wisdom eye but they also don't have they don't really have a strong normal summon anymore yeah and i think that part doesn't isn't too too relevant because okay. they still have three copies of uh pendulum call sure yeah so if it, you want to play pendulums you play that instead for now yeah uh the other thing i think is magic specter i'm kind of yes. I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of curious I'm magic, I'm, i want to see what magic specters can do without the other strong ones holding them back i i definitely see them becoming stronger so right. like i guess traps are a little more relevant okay uh, yeah solemn strike it's time to play chain beat <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. So we've talked a little bit about the viability of Pendulum Magician and Magic Specters. Uh, what other decks do you think are going to be topping now? Okay, for sure, Cosmos. Cosmos is a given. Uh, they were both competing very strong against each, each other. Right. Like the YCS and the regional reports that I've looked through or watched the videos of. Mm -hmm. A lot of them were just trying to outspeed uh, Pepe. Right. Like, oh, I'm gonna go with Tin Can Turbo, and Tin Can Turbo is definitely one of the f fastest. Tin Can's ridiculous. Tin Can's ridiculous. Tin can's a like, people thought they were gonna play it at one, now it's like two. Some people are even making three just because yeah. it's that good. I've seen quite a few lists. And three. then people just like run Call of the Haunted just to special summon all the ships back that they dump. Mm -hmm. I'm like, holy crap, what a simple no, strategy. It, it's ridiculous. It's such a simple strategy, and it's so effective. But it's kind of crazy because Cosmo was already competing with full power Pepe, and now Pepe gets hit. But Cosmo doesn't get touched at all. It's, uh, that's the one thing that I really didn't like about uh, this emergency man list. Is yeah, it, it was only super hit one biased. Deck. It was, yeah. Exactly, it's like sandboxing people. Right. Uh, okay, so Cosmo definitely Cosmo definitely, definitely one of the spots. yeah definitely top spot. Uh, what do you think about Monarchs? Monarchs for sure is gonna be Cosmo's like biggest rival. I would say mm -hmm. uh, mainly because they have a built-in. Uh, Ignister pretty much through a Rebus. Right, right. Rebus can get rid of the ships pretty easily. I know that the Cosmo deck doesn't use the uh, the extra deck very much. They don't need to yeah. because naturally their monsters are very strong. But you know, without your non-targeting ability and spinning stuff back into the deck, does hurt the deck a lot. 
and sometimes if you play the Monarch deck correctly, you also have a lot of outs to it too, because you run three Stormforths. Mm -hmm. That just mm -hmm. eats up everything and makes Stormforth is still Stormforth is really hard especially to counter against, against that Cos deck. Like especially against so that's Cosmos. why Monarchs would be the strongest contender against Cosmos. Sure, sure. But then there's another deck. That Which deck are you thinking of? Mermails are coming in. It's a bit of a rock paper scissors Mermail. thing. Yeah. Mermails are so fast at like killing someone. Mm -hmm. Like. Literally, they have two cards and they can OTK. You just need like a prince and an instant fusion, and you're pretty much dead. Yeah, guaranteed. Like cool. we I, we went over the situation like many many times. This scenario where Corbin and I would play seventeen matches, I lost all my game ones. It's impossible. Yeah. Like yeah. even if I go turn one dweller, there is still a way to kill you. Yeah, as long as they have ghost ogre. So I was like, right, okay, right, right. there you go. No, I think mermails. I don't know because prior to this emergency ban list. Mermails didn't see too much tops. There were quite a few um, skill. Mainly, I think it's the player that was yeah, skilled it, it, more than the deck. Right, yeah. The, the deck is very explosive, but you don't have a very long-term plan of how to play out the deck if you were forced into a grinding situation, say Floodgate to Floodgate. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen uh, because you burn all your resources in the first two turns. Right. Whereas all the other decks, we can push and we can, we can grind. Right, yeah. Alright, so how about decks from uh, like the Duelist Alliance area, maybe older decks that could be competitive once again? Mm, I, I kind of want to say Satellers. Satellers? But, but here, no, uh, that's, not, that's not what I was I know, but I, but I noticed there's a problem because Twin Twister is a thing, and right. there's, there's a couple decks that really synergizes with Twin Twister. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> well, okay, the two that I was thinking of are Infernoids and Burning Abyss. Hey, both of them synergize with Twin Twister. Right, yeah. <laughs> Twin Twister TV. Twin Twister TV. It's <laughs> gotta go, right? Uh, we're we're making a Twin Twister painting. Maybe. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, okay. Infernoids still scary if it goes off. I yeah. think they can kill you out of nowhere. It actually competed uh, competed pretty decently against uh, Peppy as long as they get out their uh, Deviati setup. It was right. It was very annoying because it banished stuff rather than destroyed them. It's just as long as they can get their engine going. Like, yeah. If you draw basically. a handful of Infernoids, you're still going to lose. Unless you have, like, reasoning. <laughs> but if you open triple reasoning, you're probably still winning. So it's okay. <laughs> you can go into three Decatrons. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other thing, Burning Abyss, I think everything in the deck floats. Ditch anything Still with Twin Twister. Right. <laughs> you can kill all your floodgates. Kill for all free. your opponent's floodgates, all your opponent's back row. And they can still run some floodgates themselves, so. Yeah. Not They're definitely bad. a very skillful deck to play. Uh, although Fiendish Rhino definitely was like the Fiendish best addition <laughs> to the deck. It's literally foolish burial in a monster form for yes. them. So Fiendish Rhino Warrior is a great card. Normal summon this, you can even special summon your new dude because now they can't pop. Yeah. And no, then you go I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. That was that was dumb. I think my, my teammate uh, Jason Kwan really wants to play Burning Abyss again in the upcoming format. Well, he played it at MOS two, yeah. and he did pretty well with it. I think he made top no no no. He did not play it. He played Magic Specter. Or was it ML he, MOS? He, he made top eight at one of the MOS events. Yeah, and uh, I think he's looking to do it again. I want to play it, yeah, but we don't get a chance to play. Yeah, we don't get Beatrice. So. Yeah, we don't get that either. So. Okay, so let's go on to prices. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's talk you about know, Kenny is here. Nishi's here. Let's let I mean, him we talk haven't about... We haven't had a market watch for a while. So yeah, I mean, let's talk about some of the prices that this thing definitely affects. All right, so obviously banned card Ptolemaeus. Uh, pre ban list, we were looking anywhere from 20, 15 to $20 for the Ultra, 20 to $25 for the Ultimate Rare. If you go online, eBay lowest prices right now. Five dollars for the ultra, six dollars for the ultimate. I'm so sorry, guys. I mean, I had one copy, but I picked it up when it was cheap, so I don't feel too bad. Me too. Yeah, I but, think <coughs> we'd have to pick up stuff for cheap. <laughs> yeah, generally. But I know there were some people saying like they were picking up copies of Ptolemyus because it just got hit in the OCG, so they weren't expecting it to get hit in the TCG. In for fact, a while. I actually thought it was kind of strange. I actually, I'm kind of glad about this hit because that means we don't get Azathoth anymore. <laughs> Azathoth would we're, be a we're thing not for rank four. Yeah, okay. Because uh, Azathoth was very stupid. Whether it be in TCG or OCG, Azathoth had such a big influence on your opponent's turn. It just means even if I overlay for two right. for Ptolemaeus and una I'm unable to go into a Cyber Dragon Nova, it means your turn, your turn is super stunned. And you're going to be screwed over. You can't Monarchs can't play the deck. Yeah. They're stuck. <laughs> it's terrible. It was a very terrible feeling to get Azathoth, no matter which player you were. 
Uh, anyways, uh, so speaking of Ptolemyus, we also have Cyber Dragon Infinity. So we just got Infinity in Breaker of Shadows, and... That was a really soon... That, it, although it was not a direct hit, right. it definitely influenced the price. Yeah, because, I mean, you can't Ptolemyus into Nova into Infinity, which means you're going to have to make Infinity... Er, you're going to have to make Nova. make Nova the regular way, so you're going to be playing, like, Mars. Dino Mist or... Dino Mist will factors. still be using this, this card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dino so Mist... The, actually, I think Dino Mist are kind of happy about this emergency ban, because now possibly, they can... Possibly, yeah. They can actually make triples, They have the chance to make Infinity. And they can make multiple copies right, of it. Right, yeah. Uh, but no... Infinity, like pre February third, was uh, forty five between between forty and fifty dollars. I'd say yeah. anywhere around that range. Right now, eBay it's thirty at lowest. I'd expect this price to continue dropping to like fifteen or twenty. I remember when we said it would not drop below forty. <laughs> Thank you, Konami. That's because we weren't expecting an emergency ban list. Yeah, that was a bit uncalled for. I didn't think... Like, we weren't expecting the Ptolemaeus to get hit so soon. Right, yeah. Uh, no, uh, the other thing we predicted, we thought that Pendulum Sorcerer would stay high. But, of course, we were... We were we were weren't ex weren't expecting we were this? thinking under the assumption that Pepe wouldn't get hit for a while. So pre ban list, I wasn't expecting for them to get hit for another two months because that was yeah. the earliest emergency ban list. And right. maybe they'll just get rid of it in the coming ban list. Right, right, right. But nope. No. Uh, so How much is it? pre ban list adjustment, we were looking at between fifty five and sixty dollars for uh, Pendulum Sorcerer just because of how dominant it was uh, last weekend. Well, the past couple weekends. Now we're looking at between $25 and $35, anywhere in that range. Uh, but honestly, I don't think Pepe is going to do anything. I mean, Infinity is still an Ixies that other decks can make, so I can see the price staying a bit higher. But what's Pendulum Sorcerer going to do now? I think it's going like, to keep dropping to like 20 bucks. There's still cards coming out for uh, Performa Pals. We've got Odd Eyes Unicorn. Sure. That, that was a very interesting card. It's a scale 8. Mm -hmm. That's uh, generic. And it's an odd eyes card, so you can actually use uh, Sky Arc to dig it out. Mm -hmm. So there's there's that going for it. But at the same time, uh, we did lose Skulker Bat. And I think right. losing Skulker Bat and Monkey Bolt was too severe of a hit. Yeah, Even no. if you hit Luster at 1, we can run other tuners to get out Ignister. But this is just... No, this is scary. This is scary. Like This card's definitely going to stay pretty low until the ban list somehow gets adjusted further. Right. Uh, speaking of Luster, uh, so Luster is limited. I know when uh, Clash of Rebellion first came out, Luster Pendulum was a $5 card. People realized how good it was. Peaked as high, yeah, it peaked as high as like 40 or $45. Yeah, it was 40 even for like a, uh, like one of those think, reprints. Yeah, yeah. Even after the reprint uh, with it being unlimited, we were looking at 25 to 30 for unlimiteds and maybe 35 probably between 30 and 35 for first eds and i just checked online earlier and i can buy a luster pendulum for 13 dollars like people are posted like i'm in all of the facebook groups like the trade groups and people are posting lusters for like 13 15 bucks and no one wants to pick them up it's gonna drop <laughs> even more yeah well i mean the card's still good it's just that it's limited there's so much excess copies of luster pendulum flooding the market everyone has it yep it's kind of ridiculous too bad <sighs> anyways uh so that's that's the key stuff from pepe there's a couple of other cards that i want to talk about so this is related to cosmo because oh. everyone's freaking out about cosmo so dark destroyer which was pretty consistently a hundred dollars for quite a while even it was at lowest it was like 80. yeah the lowest i've seen cosmo dark destroyer go for is 80. uh that card literally overnight after the ban list was adjusted shot up to 140 us dollars online and even then there are still very limited copies of it available i think some people are holding on thinking that it's gonna go higher than that <laughs> honestly if cosmo if cosmo becomes like a tier zero deck then it could maintain a $140 price tag. Realistically, I think we're looking at it settling back between $100 and $110. Just it's, still I, a, it's, still a, it's still going Oh, no. It's it still, still it's went up from the from its previous mm -hmm. point. And, but that actually kind of makes me worry when you see them going to a tier 0 level. What makes it so that they're not going to get hit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So if they don't get hit as well. Well, then Konami did say in their post that this is like a emergency case situation right. 
it's not likely that another deck is going to get emergency slashed. Well, so, it's hard. It's hard. It's also hard. to But say then again, they're they're always keeping us in the dark. Konami never reveals yeah, anything. They don't give us any information. Come on. A uh, couple other small things to do with Cosmo. Uh, Cosmo Farm Girl. Uh, before this emergency adjustment was like thirteen $13? to seventeen dollars around that range. Uh, overnight, it shot up to twenty five dollars. So substantial increase if do you, you think it'll still go up uh, i think what about tournament like well do you think the tournament results will actually influence that? yeah absolutely i think that if it sees a lot more play i think it can go back to as high as 30. Ooh, uh, well it's not gonna hit that 60 mark no it's, which it was. I'd, I'd be really really surprised if it ever went back up to 60. it was it's it has already been reprinted so right it, we have the unlimited versions now um, the other thing, Cosmo Tin Can, which was like a $2 ultra, but as Tom Box was talking about, Tin Can Turbo. Being the better Cosmo <laughs> deck? Cosmo deck, shoot yeah. ships out the ass. Yeah. Uh, Co well, tin Can's like 7 or 8 bucks now, so it's increased in price by like 300%, literally, overnight. So, I mean, probably a card you would have overlooked if you had it, but like... Yeah, people only ran one, now it's two, now it's like almost three. Yeah, people now, e tell you it out all the time. Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. It's seeing a lot of play, so yeah, maybe pick it up for cheap if you can. Yeah, try anyway. Yeah, good luck. Even Cosmo, what about Cosmojo? Any changes no, on that? Actually, surprisingly, Cosmojo uh, pre ban list was like between six and eight dollars. Uh, I've been I've been checking the prices. It's still between six and eight dollars. No notable increases in price. I think the decks that did top playing Cosmo uh, they played two copies yeah. and even some decks they were only playing it in the sideboard yeah yeah so they thought it was a bit too slow because they don't want to open it so if they go game one to go right. game one they don't want to open with this card especially if they go first right but then after they know what their opponent is playing they can adjust the speed of the the play style right so they can search it with the farm girl when they need it while holding a ship at the same time well like what you were saying with uh using e to constantly bring out ships with Call of the Haunted and Tin Can, Cosmojo doesn't really fit into that playstyle. It seems like a bit of a disruptive card, but maybe it's a better card to side in. Against the certain matchups. Right, so uh, I think I, would, I wouldn't expect Cosmojo to be higher than $10. Okay. I think I'd, I'd expect it to stay relatively constant. So for our final remarks about this ban list, or this adjustment list, uh, I thought it was super biased just to remove a just removing one specific deck out of the right. equation. It's not like they were individual not, problem cards. It's that the, the whole deck, the whole deck was it. a problem. So. I think that was kind of dumb. I think they could have slowed the deck down for sure. Yeah, there are instead of removing it completely. I think that was kind of dumb, especially with product that's so new. You took away the one safety net of players that really went into buying cards. Right. Well, I mean, people were obviously investing a lot of money because pendulum sorcerers people spent like maybe 60 or 80 bucks on infinities people were spending 50 dollars on uh lusters people were spending 30 to 40 dollars on so people obviously commit a large chunk of money into playing this, this deck this could and, be an attack on the secondary market as well i mean it could be i, don't, I mean I, it's definitely very successful at it right now well yeah but i mean i've been i've been looking around on facebook groups talking to people around at locals and i know there are this ban list is really killing Yu-Gi-Oh for a lot of people people are trying to get rid of their collections, people aren't as motivated to play anymore because they're saying, well, if I'm going to invest in cards, I want the security to say, I can like, play it. I'm, I'm gonna use these cards for the next little while, but all of a sudden Konami's gone and said, okay, now that you've purchased our product, you can't play anymore. So all of these cards that you spent money on and you invested in, they're now almost worthless. Well, that, that doesn't feel good as a customer base, right? Yeah. Like, why and would I invest money into this game where... Like, I kind of feel the same... I kind of feel very similar because mm -hmm. I did buy a case of this stuff. Right. Mainly for our little case opening video. <laughs> that, was, that, was that, was that was pretty cool. Uh, but at the same time, I felt like, yeah, I lost that safety net. I don't feel like buying any more products from you guys. Especially, right. I'm not gonna... I'm gonna have to worry whether or not the deck is gonna be too good. Are you gonna slash right. our yeah. deck? Yeah. I... Like, a lot of people that are trying to go to YCS's and stuff, they've invested in deck. They're practicing with the deck constantly, and they don't, they don't have a YCS or a regional event until after, right. thing, uh, after that date. Right. What have you done to those people? Yeah. You literally slashed them in the face. Well, I think this is a big part of why back before when we had like established dates for ban lists that were very clear yeah uh that was definitely a benefit of that because you know okay this deck will live 90 percent of the time is going to live up to there we had the couple of emergency ban lists before they were really rare yeah, they, they were, were they were only like we've oh a two. shonen jump 
Shonen Jump car came out. Right. Two good. Green Baboon was one of them. Mm -hmm. And the other one was Cyberstein. Uh, Cyberstein. There was also Return Dad. That was a Return Dad deserved that right. emergency ban because Dimension Fusion. That loop was stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Spell Economics, Dimension Fusion, Demock, Endless Loop to draw your entire deck with a Cyber uh, with a Cyber Valley. Right. Um, that was stupid. So those deserve emergency bans. Right. I I feel like this didn't. I feel like they could have handled it a lot better. They yeah. could have maybe only banned plush fire and like damage juggler. Another... I wouldn't I wouldn't mind hitting damage juggler either. Right, but even if they only made those couple of hits, I think that the deck would still be somewhat viable. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think that players wouldn't feel as turned off by that. Yes. Right? Because Do you have a lot of people quitting? Uh, I know a couple of people, I've seen a lot of different posts online, people wanting to get rid of their collections because uh, they're just not worth as much. Yeah, like, because they it's... lost a lot of value because of the ban list, so... Yeah, I don't think that was a very smart move, and even for Cosmo players, like, if you guys hit tier 0 and all, everyone just whines about it, oh, there's too many Cosmos right. at the event... What are you gonna do? Are you gonna ban Cosmos now? Yeah, exactly. Like... I don't think that's very smart. Yeah, I don't quite know what Konami was doing about this, but... I thought, like, the deck was only going to live for about one more month before it gets Right, hit. right. It's, it's going to live up to the next ban list. I just didn't think that they were going to kill it, like, two, three weeks into the product, pretty yeah. much. That's, yeah. that's a bit too soon. This is not like back then. Like, I may have mentioned, like, back in, two, back in the dawn of Yu-Gi-Oh!, whenever a set came out, a ban list gets updated. Right. That's what they did until the two ban list format. Yeah. No, it's... And then we went to 4, and now we're at that really weird phase where we don't know when the ban list is coming yeah, out. Yeah, no, it's really confusing. It makes it very difficult to... It's not transparent at all. It makes it very difficult to make smart investments, but, I mean, if Konami's trying to kill the secondary market, then I, I guess they're kind of achieving that. That's terrible. Yeah, it, it like, for me, I, I do a lot of buying and selling of cards. It makes me very uncomfortable when it comes to investing in a certain card that I think is going to be good, just because I'm afraid that it's going to be on the ban list is that the right decision to make yeah that's i think that's kind of dumb yeah any other things you want to add on to this no i i think that's pretty much it um i i'm kind of concerned about the possibility that konami saw this coming and pushed breakers of shadow they included too many good cards but like the fact that damage juggler and plush fire were both common can you imagine how much more upset people would be if those were secret errors? Oh man. And people dropped like $80 a piece on them? This kind of, it brings me back to Dragon Ruler format because when we had the baby dragons and the big dragons. They were just rares and commons. commons. Right, but can you imagine how ridiculous the prices would have been if the baby dragons were secret and the big dragons were ultra. That would have been terrible. That that the, means everyone, that would have been like the Teledad banning. Yeah. Because Teledad, the whole deck was you can foil that whole deck out. Right. It's very easy. And most of the decks, uh, the cards in the deck, average to about $40. Right. But like the baby dragons would have been like easily $100 a piece and you would have needed eight of them, two of each attribute. It would have cost about uh, $1,500 to build yeah, the deck. Yeah, no, it would have easily costed like $1,500. And then when you slash the deck, you would have slashed about $800 worth of the cards. Right. So I mean, I don't know what Konami was like, this almost seems like it was pre-calculated. Actually, I read the post, and they, they did plan for uh, Peppy to be the strongest deck in the format. Right, it, was, yeah. it was stated in there. Um, but part of that's because but then they, when had they said OCG they, precedent. Yeah, but then when they said it was planned, I was like, did they also plan this did, ban did list? They plan this this the emergency, emergency ban, ban list, yeah. that was, that was that expected as well? Because if they did, this uh -huh. makes the game super unstable to play. Right. And that's what makes it because most we're of the all we're work. all at the whim of Konami. They can change whatever they want, whatever they, they want I felt, to. I felt like a little big Big Brother tactic here. Yeah, like <laughs> I don't know. But don't okay, know. speaking of the last little bit about this ban, this uh, adjustment list. Now, the last little saving grace that I will give to them is the sadly the saving grace is keeping us in the dark. Right. Yeah. Because when they said that like Konami, some or perhaps all of it will roll over to the next ban list. Some perhaps it's very all. cryptic. <laughs> like, is it all or is it some? Like, if they actually leave out maybe two of the things in that list, I think maybe there's leave, a bit of saving grace. I think they could leave Skullcrabat at three and Luster at two. Yes. I then I would stay, okay. or then, even Luster at three, whatever. Yeah. Well, the thing is, Luster is always a side out card. 
right? Always. But like one of Monkey Board or Skulker Bat's gonna come back. I feel. I, I do hope that one or one or the other. Uh, it would make more sense for Skulker Bat to be at three because magicians. Pendulum magician, right? But unless they want to hit magicians as well, because magicians is kind of a degenerate deck if you open with the right cards. Sure. Okay, you go. Debatable. You go. Mechanical Hound, Apex Avian. Okay, Mechanical yeah. Hound. Fuck that card. <laughs> it's true. Mechanical, mechanical Hound. Hound. Mechanical Hound, Apex Avian, and a Unicorn. Yeah, yeah. And ridiculous. Good luck playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Pretty much, that's what he's saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's there. I think that's all we've got for this uh, emergency slaughter. The other thing is, we also want to hear you guys' opinions. Like, what do you guys think about? this emergency ban list adjustment uh how did this affect you guys's uh mentality of like buying cards some just, guards yeah just other thoughts that you guys had please leave a comment down below do you want to see us make a ban list prediction i mean i can't really predict too much right now aside from the stuff that's already been mentioned yeah that's that's true i'm i'm scratching my head on this one i, I know i'm kind of it's really confusing like we were about to make a video we were we were literally discussing making a ban list an hour before the post from Konami came out. We were talking on Facebook and we were like, yo, let's make a ban list prediction. Ban prediction video. Well, I and was then, talking about how stupid my list was going to be and he was talking about how legit his list was going to yeah, be. Yeah, and, and then we were like, okay, we'll meet up tomorrow. And then we stopped talking for like a few minutes. And then 30 minutes later, I see the list on Facebook. I messaged Thomas. I'm like, Thomas, Konami beat us to it. Yeah. That was so funny. No, it was ridiculous. Ironic timing. Anyways, but yeah, uh, just let us know down below what you guys think. Yeah, and, and uh, if you like our video, please give us a thumbs up. I know a lot of other guys have already posted about this topic. Hopefully, we gave you a different angle on this. Right. Uh, if you guys want to see more videos like bandless prediction, set previews, all that good duels. stuff. Yeah, yeah, duels. Yeah, duels is really cool. Yeah. A make lot sure of people that think that the domain. Everyone commented thinking that domain was a one-sided thing, but then if I controlled oh. a tribute summon monster. I can use my extra deck. It doesn't lock out that guy. It's like spell uh, secret village of the spellcasters. Sure, sure. All right, but please, if you guys want to see more, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And as always, don't forget to hold on to your MST. Dot TV.